So we're going to start with an open whole tensile test specimen and this we are taking from this publication and what they've looked at here is typical combinations of the width and the length of a specimen that will give you optimal behavior for an open hole tensile test specimen and this is all what we see here so the diameter here is four millimeters for this hole and the width will then be w over d equals five which means the width will be 20 and based on this combination the length will be 80 millimeters so the next thing we see here is how do we apply periodic boundary condition on this open hole tensile test specimen and essentially what we see here would be okay so we've got all these corner nodes that are defined here which we are going to use to apply periodic boundary condition so at the back end we're going to use the node 4 and the node 1 which will be here so we we'll constrain it only on those nodes in the x direction or the one direction and here we constrain the y direction to simulate the represent volume element for tensile deformation so we note node 4 node 1 node 2 and then we have to also note node 3 it's a dummy node it's a slave node we're not going to use it for anything but it's going to inherit the behavior of what's happening in node 2 and node 4 and then we also apply our periodic boundary condition so the essence of this periodic boundary condition for the nodes in between is to then impose in a cyclic behavior between the front and the back and the top and the bottom node as usual and then apply our displacement whatever our displacement load will be in this model so this is sort of setup that we're going to work with and let's go into abacus and show you how this actually can be set up so here we are in abacus so what we're going to do first is to create this open hole tensile specimen obviously we're doing it in two dimensions so we create on the part so i'm going to call it open hole tensile specimen and we're going to make it a 2d specimen so it's deformable and we're going to use a short structure so what we're going to do is to create this rectangular rve which is 20 millimeter in width and 80 millimeter in length so if i click on that so what we have to here minus 40 on the x-axis and minus 10 for one corner of the rv of the rectangle and then 40 and 10 for the other corner so that gives us the rv that we're looking at where on the y-axis here is 20 and the horizontal axis here is that so clearly in the middle here we want to introduce this open hole and um, circle so if i click on the circle so the origin will be obviously zero zero the way i've drawn it and then because it's going to be a diameter of four so one end will be two and zero so that gives us the open hole tensile specimen sitting right there in the middle and we've got our specimen and we click done so that's the specimen so clearly they, they will need to start setting it up in terms of getting it into a periodic boundary condition format so let's think about the material so i'm going to model this using something like polypropylene so pp would be the material normally used the elastic properties of pp in terms of millimeters would be 1.308 e raised to power 3 and then the plasticity of pp i'm going to just use an elastoplastic material model so you know, for alone 40 megapascal and 0.0, .0. So just an elastoplastic behavior. And so we create a section. So this will be PP section. So if I look at the PP, then I could look at doing a few things with this polypropylene material. So first thing, I'm going to mesh it. So let's do two. So this is two overall. However, in the middle here, we need to mesh it more finely. So I'm going to select the middle region here using this edge. So I'll just select this center because we need to finely mesh it. And I'm going to mesh it by number. So probably make this about 40. So that it will, be, it will be finely refined in the middle. We want to see the stress distribution right in the middle because that's the sense of the open hole tensile specimen. And then we can then look at how you're going to mesh it. So let's probably use trihedra, but you can use any other meshing algorithm. So, and then we'll look at what. So yeah, this looks all right. So we've got a fine mesh right in the center where we are really interested in what the stress distribution in that hole would be. And every other part around it looks all right. The other thing we can then do is section assignment. So I'll select the section and obviously it's going to be polypropylene so in the assembly we can create an instance so which is fine and then i'll now start creating sets so the first thing i'm going to here is i'm going to use my corner notes so we need this corner notes and that basically means i need to select all four of this material at the corner here okay we can then look at boundary conditions so i'm going to fix the back end and the, so here i'm going to have my x back roller so let's use an x back roller an initial boundary condition displacement is accepted so i just select that and that and that's done and it's unconstrained in the one direction so y base roller so again i'm going to collect this and that and that will be in the two direction okay so we're going to include also we need our set so this will be my loading step a static general will normally be acceptable and 
I'll look at our history output. So my reference corner node history output is what I'm going to track. So I need to track a certain set of parameters for this. So we're going to work with the set corner node. So we're going to use the reference point one, reaction force one, reaction point two, coordinate one, coordinate two, and U1 and U2. So we we'll normally work with these values when we're working with periodic boundary condition in the way that I'm shown. So we're going to track this and we we'll use principal vector work subsequently to establish stress and strain data for this result. And then we can then create the job. So I'm going to call this, so let's call it job for open hole tensile specimen. So we'll continue that and then that's fine. So what we have is now a model that is set up. However, we need to apply periodic boundary condition on this. So the first thing we need to do here is that we need to write an input file for this result. So right click on the job and click write input file. So we need to find where that file is. So if I open file set working directory. Okay, so this is sort of where the file is. So I'm going to then harvest it. So I'll copy that link, go there, harvest the data. So looking in the folder here, I've got my open whole tensile specimen. If I right click and then I'll copy that data. So I'll copy it. Now to apply periodic boundary condition, you can do it manually, which is very labor intensive. And if you're interested in that, then this is a video that can help you. However, I'm going to use a software that I developed, which is called PBC Gen 2D. So it works on a 2D domain and it applies periodic boundary condition on a 2D domain. And I'm going to use that for this. So it currently will run inside MATLAB. So if we go into MATLAB, so when you get it to code, it looks like this. So you've got the readme file that tells you something about the code. So we've got a PPC gen that runs and apply periodic boundary conditions. So I'm going to paste the job file. So we've collected the job and we're going to paste it here. So we're going to run this and apply periodic boundary condition on it. So if I right click here and say OK run, so what it will do is that it will ask me for the code. So I'll find the code here, open. So now it starts iterating through that code. Okay, so when it finishes, it will generate these two graphs. So the second one here, the figure one here, basically is the plot of all the uh, node out sets in the, that make up the system and also the X and negative points, all the nodes on the edges. So if you focus more closely on this, then you can see the corner nodes highlighted in blue, the upper node being the Y positive internal nodes, the one, the green Y negative internal nodes, the X back or X negative and X front. So we're going to use those corner nodes to apply our periodic boundary condition. So the code sort of identifies this for this element that we have just looked at. So and then it gives you some output here about what is done. So if you look inside the file, there is a data here called the jobs folder where the particular model that we ran. So when you open that, so it gives you some information. But the most important thing is that you've got this output file here, which is an updated file. This file now is PBC aware. So if I open it outside, and then you could see what it's doing. So if you look inside all the way, you could see, okay, it created some nodal set and more importantly, it creates also some star equations which apply the period boundary condition on the domain. So with this updated input file, we basically have the result that we're looking for. So if I co copy that link, so I'll go back into Abaku. So I'm going to import that particular model. So just put the position where it is as an IMP file. So now when I import it, it's now become available and I can run models on it and I can do whatever I like. So that's the updated input file. So if you open that, you could see under the constraint option, there's a lot of constraint equation that tells you the linkages between the systems involved. So if, for example, if you select this, so you see this part is linked together with that. So everything looks all right. And we have a periodic boundary condition aware model. So the only thing remaining for us is to run the model and generate our results. So if I go and now create again, so the job with BBC aware. So just based on this updated input file, and then we can then run it. So if I submit that, so what it will do now is I will run and generate the result and we can study the result as well. Okay, so now that we finish running the model, so if we just look at the simulation, the animation so it shows us what's going on here so basically we've got the whole expanding and then the shared distribution is being fed across this so if we look at option common and then with that i can just tell it i want to show only the future edges so we can see how the stress distribution is forming and how the shape is progressing and showing you what's going on with this. So this is sort of the kind of interesting feature that we want to see when you're looking at um, open hole tensile specimen and everything we're doing has been based on periodic boundary conditions. So if we look at view the result and look at the OBD display, so I can ask it to show me the constraint, the boundary conditions as well. 
so at least we have an idea of what's happening so based on the boundary condition you can then see exactly how the system is acting so we've got the deformation moving in this way and this is where the loading is and we get this corner nose being the anchored point and everything here is moving in a periodically deforming manner so clearly the next stage is to try and see if we can get stress strain data from this so we look at the history output that we are tracking so based on the history output there are a few things that we have here so i'm going to press down shift so control and then shift now so i'll select that and then move again then go back control shift select that control now and then shift select all that so that selects this data and select that data leaving those behind and then i can plot that so if we plot that it gives us a data of a stress strain graph based on the system that we're looking at then what we can then do with this is to look at the plugin tools excel utility so we can harvest all of these data so we'll come from current plot so we'll take all this data into an excel file and that excel file will help us get stress strain data from this so this is our excel files so i'm just going to copy all this data so i'll put ctrl a to select or ctrl c to copy now i've already prepared an excel data sheet that we're going to use to analyze this so and that's what the excel data sheet basically look like so the length of the rve is 80 and the width of the RE is 20 and the height is 1. So we're just using a, a unit of 1 because this is um, it's a 2D element. So the depth is really irrelevant in this instance. So we want to calculate that. So if we go over here, so what we've got here is the time, displacement, coordinate position, X1, time, coordinate zone. So I'll just paste all that data. So just to look at what data we have here. So at the end of this, so we have a data column for force, data column for strain, and then a data column for stress. So you look at the force, so it tells you the combination. So this is the virtual work principle of how do you get stress strain data, force data from a periodically boundary conditions deforming body. So that's what we have here. So if you want this script, please do look in the description section of this video, which will show you how to get hold of the script. So in terms of the strain, so the strain is basically the displacement in the X direction or the one direction, which is displacement one divided by the stress, the distance, the length, which is just a nominal strain. So if you look at the stress, basically the stress is that force divided by a cross-sectional area. And that cross-sectional area will be the length times the width. This is sort of the graph you get. And if you then make a comparison, so that's what we see here. So basically this is a graph generated from the simulation. And this is a Young's modulus, which is 1.20277. Remember, the, what we put in is 1.308 Ega Pascal. So because of the presence of the hole, it's obviously affecting the strength of this material. So we're getting one point. 1.3 approximately the yield strength of this material was 40 megapascal with again because of the presence of the open hole test then we it's just reduced a little bit to 37 megapascal so we're sort of generally happy with this one so if you want to learn a bit more about how to apply periodic boundary condition using either a manual method then this is the video to do it if you want to see a little bit more about what my code does which is pvc gen 2d then this is a video for you to see thank you for interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye